From the floor of the CME Group, this is Danny Riley on this Monday, September 13th. It's the September Options Expiration Week, and you know what, we're going to kind of take this in pieces. What happened last Sunday night was that some news came out of Europe. Well, first of all, Asia was up, and then some news came out of Europe that some new regulations were going to be imposed on the EU banking system, and it had the S&P up sharply. Okay, that's the first part. The second part is that when we came in, the markets, there were, there were no economic releases, and we opened up sharply higher, right up against the resistance that we've been bouncing off of in the September S&P. Now, we've been talking about this for a couple weeks, and I know that a lot of people doubted the feeling that we had from the trading desk. Now, the problem with this is that we know that we're not electronic traders. We know that we're not computerized guys. We know that we're not looking at charts. We know we're not looking at trend lines. What we're looking at is, is very simply the bus got too full, okay? That's really what happened. The bears got too negative, and when the markets bottomed a little bit down there, they took off, and they did for a lot of reasons. A lot of the economic data that we have been looking at turned a little better. The housing picture improved a little bit, and so did the economic so did the job stuff, okay? That's it. That's it in a nutshell. And now we're going into an S&P options expiration and everybody's short. What you going to do when the S&P comes after you, okay? That's the deal here. The markets move up, they move down, and when they move down, everybody got short and they put in buy stops. And once the markets started moving up and those premiums expanded, in came all the buyers, okay? That's it. Now, as we go into the latter parts of this week, I want to explain something. September, these particular dates, this Monday, is one of the worst Mondays in history for the S&P, as is this coming Wednesday. But you know what? We don't believe any of it, all right? I don't believe in it. The S&P right now is at 1123.2390, up against those old 26 and a half highs. Are you going to be bearish into this? You want to sell this? Go ahead. We don't think so, okay? And furthermore, we think the markets are going to continue higher. Now, that doesn't mean that the markets can't sell off a little bit here going into the end of the month or even after the expiration. I believe they should, or we believe they should. But at the bottom, at the end of the day, there is no really where to put money. You can go into the bond, you can go into the bonds. Last week, I think $2.5 billion went into bonds and 500 million came out of stocks. But again, where is the VIG in all that? Where are you gonna make any money in that? You're, the, the, the rates are too low. So you gotta go out, you gotta take risk, you gotta trade, you gotta trade. And Marty Schwartz, excuse me, the pit bull has said this, you're only as good as your last trade. Okay? Okay, that's the way it works around here. As far as the rest today is concerned, you know what, the volumes are minute. When you look at all the Globex volumes pre-open and you look what's on the board right now, forget about it, it's all spreads. People are not looking to take on risk right now. They're rolling positions for the expiration this Friday. As far as the statistics are for the S&P options expiration, it looks to be a positive week. But again, you've got all this kind of funky stuff about the historical negatives that are floating around in the big down days. and the bears are really, really looking to see if they can get the markets down a little bit going into the end of the week and maybe into next week. What we see is very, very simple. The markets are, the S&P in particular is holding premium, okay? It's holding premium. It makes it easier to do a buy program than it does a sell program. And with the long-term stops that are sitting above the markets, above 12, let me give it to you again, above 1127 up to 1133, it's all buy stops. Above 1135 up to 4 it's all buy stops. Now, we don't want to jump ahead of ourselves. As soon as we start calling, calling out these higher prices after the markets rallied, you're looking for a black eye. We don't want any black eyes. What we want to do is continue to look at the way the markets are trading, and to us, it looks like they're back and filling again. Now, does that mean that they can stop on a dime? Yes, it can. But we don't think that's going to stop this week. Maybe later in the week, maybe next week. We'll be back tomorrow with another market update.